Well, this morning I've brought you to the grounds of Melbourne Hall. It's a, it's a wonderful setting and I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can get the overall view. And you can see in the background there, there's the church and this is the lake that's in front of the hall itself. Really is a wonderful setting and I've come here on this autumnal morning. It's just stopped raining here in Derby and now Melbourne Hall is probably about 10 miles just outside of Derby. It's a lovely place as you can see. Well, I've come here to introduce you to the character of Yeshe. Now Yeshe is my little Tibetan boy. He's my He's from Lasha in Tibet, formerly now known as the Autonomous Region of China. And it's the story of this little Tibetan Buddhist boy. Now in Tibet there's a tradition of, uh, I believe that the, the second son in the family is normally sent to the monasteries. The Tibetans are great Buddhist people. And so he's sent to the monasteries by his father. Now he's not too happy about that. He is a, a young little boy who's got different plans. And he's trying to balance the, uh, the ancient customs and traditions of his family, the, the Drogba families. They, they're nomads, they spend most of their uh, time up in the high plateaus of Tibet looking after their herds of yak, goats, cattle, uh, well not cattle, yaks, and they live a nomadic life. You know, when the, um, the grasses have uh, worn out, they just simply pack up and go and move on to another area. But this isn't a life that he wants because modern Lasha now has got the you know the lights of Lasha, it's got modern technology, and this is what he's really after. But he has to try and um, balance this, like many of the uh, Tibetan um, children do these days. They're trying to balance the traditions of their their ancient uh, forefathers and modern day life. Um, so it's the story really of. Um, Yeshe trying to balance tradition and his future. Now, I, in the story, I will take you to the Forbidden City in Beijing. I will take you to across the Himalayas into Northern India. And the reason why I've take you to those places is firstly to Beijing. Um, as I said, Yeshe is not too happy with his father sending him to the monastery and he really is, um, he, he escapes out of the monastery with the help of his Chinese friend Yinghei. And now, just to give the story a little bit of interest, there was no point in saying, oh, he, to punish his father, he just hid around the corner, he ran away, ran away around the corner. That's just not interesting. So I put it a little bit more exciting. I made him run away all the way to Beijing, which, because what I wanted to do there was bring in the fabulous railway line that goes all the way from Lasha into Beijing. And I took him to Beijing because in there is the Forbidden City. Now, the Forbidden City is the place where the ancient emperors of China used to live. And it was called the Forbidden City because you were forbidden to go in there unless you had permission from the emperor. And when you go there, it's a, a wonderful place. It's intriguing. It's full of history, full of culture. And I took you, I take you there. So that's why I brought Yeshe there to bring in the Forbidden City. Now, I also brought in um, going to take you across the, uh, the, Al the Himalayas to um, Dar es Salaam in northern India. Now it's there because this is the route that the Dalai Lama took on the 17th of March 1959 when he had to flee for his life from the Chinese authorities. 
he disguised himself as a simple soldier and went on horseback overnight across the Himalayas into northern India. Now the journey took about 15 days and it's quite treacherous but I take you on that journey and I take you to Dar es Salaam and that's where Yeshe meets the Dalai Lama because the story is also touching on a little bit about the history of the Buddhist religion there, the uh, Buddhist ways. So it's a, it's a story of, uh, with an ancient part attached to it and a modern part because Yeshe agrees to spend six months of the year with his parents and his younger siblings up in the high plateaus of Tibet leading a nomadic life but that agreement is also that he spends six months of the year with his older brother in Lasha where he can go to school where he's on the internet and he's seen all the modern ways of Lasha and getting an insight into the new modern world that's what he wants because he really wants to be is an international human rights lawyer so the traditions of the Buddhist way of life for him in the monasteries isn't what he wants but he has to go down that route just to placate his father but he punishes his father for sending him there and he goes to the forbidden city to hide out a great place to go and hide out believe you me anyway next week I am going to take you to the United States of America to Yellowstone Park and it's here that we're going to meet uh, Kaimana and Diane. Now the two girls are Native Americans. Kaimana, the main character, well she is from the Shoshone people and Diane is from the Cheyenne people. It's the story of the park, the, the wolf that they find, the, the wildlife there, but Kaimana has another career in mind. She wants to do something very special and so she goes as a birthday present. Her father takes her to the Kennedy Space Centre and if you want to know why, read the story. But for, but for now I'm going to leave you and say see you in the United States. But isn't this view behind me on this beautiful autumn day in just outside of Derby. Isn't it spectacular? Let's have another whirl round with a camera. Have a look guys, isn't it beautiful? Peaceful, tranquil, beautiful. See you next week in the United States of America. Bye guys.